looks like Musical March in September has come to a close. And given the movie that's on the roster for today, all I have to say about that is thank fucking Christ! I do believe that maybe there was a time and place for a Village People movie, perhaps during 1978 at the peak of disco-themed movies, or when the Village People released their biggest selling album, Cruisin', which contained their hit single, YMCA. I'm just saying that releasing a Village People pseudo-biographical film at a time when disco music was at the height of its backlash, and on June 20th, 1980, the same exact date as another musical film, The Blues Brothers was released, is the very definition of poor timing. Not to mention that this film is as biographical to the village people as McHugh was a biography of Steve McQueen. Well, okay, maybe I'm being a little harsh here. Perhaps this is the true story of the village people. If the village people were discovered by a roller skating Steve Gutenberg, a supermodel, and her Indian dress-up houseboy, and if the backstory didn't involve the group's founding member, Victor Willis, who left the group before the movie's production. The movie takes two hours to tell a questionable backstory when groups like the Mamas and the Papas did their backstory in like two minutes. The only thing this movie serves as a backstory to is that between this and Xanadu, it helped inspire the formation of the Razzies. So... thanks? Oh, but which is the better movie? Such a hard question! Oh wait, that's an easy question, it's Xanadu. But it is a disco movie, so perhaps the beginning of the film gets you all pumped up and excited. Ooh, silence. We're already two minutes in and someone's already stopped the music. Though it does have a title card brought to us with the same level of effects work that the local UHF station uses to tell me about the opening of a new pizzeria. Steve Gutenberg stars as struggling DJ Jack Morell, a play off the group's founder, Jacques Morelli. So clearly there's no better way to portray French musical composer Jacques than with all-American boy Steve Gutenberg. Look, if I ever needed to get off on time, tonight is the night. I mean... It's practically life or death. What do you mean? Ooh, someone's excited for that police academy audition. He better get the hell out of here before the kid from Rockets Your Decision shows up to tell him about hell. This must be the part where Jack quits his job on what looks to be a busier day than Black Friday. But the next time you take inventory in here, you'll be counting the albums of Jack Morell. Because I am a composer, not a schlepper salesman. And then he went off to build robots. It really puts a lot of faith in the acting talents of the village people when the movie isn't even starring them, and flaunts that it's the introductory film of Bruce Jenner, and listen to this music. Listen to the sound of the city. Listen to the cats on the street. That's not even a village people song. But at least the song is telling me all about New York. New York. New York. The parks and the playgrounds. New York is a sweet sound of children at play. Yes, New York is all of those things. If all of those things robbed me. It's such a happy place. You can beat off to the newest Jesse St. James porno at half price. And not only that. You can take a ride on a tramway. Hold your breath while you're coming down. You best hold your breath because obviously you are blowing someone on said tramway. You can do anything in New York. Dress up like dead celebrities, slap Gutenberg on the ass, anything! Except for roller skating, pedaling, bicycling, or ball playing. I beg to differ. There was a lot of ball playing in the theater that I saw this in. <laughs> what? I bought a box of Whoppers. He already seems a little arrogant in terms of his DJing skills, but how is he with the ladies? <laughs> Up for the Miss Piggy look -alike I'll make sure to use that line. If I ever want to get shot, who the fuck was this movie made for? What movie are we watching tonight, bro? Can't stop the music. It's a man's movie, bro. It's got cops, construction workers, cowboys, Indians. You bring the beer? Oh, you know I brought the beer, bro. Good, bro, because I brought the guns. Oh, yeah! This is Samantha, who Jack is house-sitting for, and who also has a member of the village people living in her house. Hey, Felipe! What are you doing up there? 
My TV broke. He appears to be listening to another bomb on his TV. No joke, this movie was a bigger bomb than the one in that other Gutenberg film, The Day After. Needless to say, this movie is no diner. I'm just in it. I didn't invent I'm just in a Sam. Yes, I didn't invent it, I'm just in it, later became Gutenberg's catchphrase, somewhere around the time of It Takes Two. And if you didn't know that this was an Indian... <laughs> Honey, is there a reason that Chief Elina Wick is staying in our house? Never mind the title. I think the movie is trying to tell itself to stop before anything more ridiculous happens. Ready for another moment of truth? What's he gonna do with that sponge, bro? Relax, bro. He's just gonna wax the hood of his 1980 turbo model Pontiac Firebird. That's a car for a real man, bro. Just like Smokey and the Bandit 2, bro. Fucking bird. Bro! Bro! Yeah! I should have known the movie was gonna end up here, given how the last scene ended. Oh boy, one hot night coming up. No, no, not that part. The other part. Oh, please. Come on, nice little rug. Yes, that part, because this movie is a goddamn mess and someone needs to clean it up. And now Gaetano Proclo has found another gay hangout to hide out in to escape from Carmine Vespucci. Actually, Jack Weston is just trying to steer clear of Gutenberg because of what he did to Johnny Five in Short Circuit 2. Don't worry, Gutenberg is having a good enough time as a DJ. He'll probably be arrested by Crockett and Tubbs by the end of this. Sam, look at him. They're happy. They're so happy. They've forgotten everything that gets them down. Well, that's not because of the music. That's because of the cocaine they just snorted off a stack of urinal cakes. Don't worry. I can handle success a hell of a lot better than I can handle a root canal. To be fair, I can handle a root canal better than I could sit through Zeus and Roxanne. But this is when the party gets started. Yet another song that's not by the village people. I can't tell if it's the tape fucking up or the movie. This is why disco went under, because of the increasingly heavy electric bills. And how do I break it to this poor lady that I don't think he's into you? Now this is what I call DJing. Take over the next set for me, huh? Sure. Hey, your stuff is terrific. Thank you. I play other people's music very well. Samantha has an in with an ex-boyfriend who is a very powerful record producer. <laughs> Joke's on her. Robert Stigwood isn't quite as hot as he used to be. Must have to do with all of that modeling experience, where she seems to be very well respected. How fat are you? Enormous! I've blown up like the Hindenburg! I can't imagine why Olivia Newton-John turned this role down. Seriously, Olivia Newton-John was originally offered the role of Samantha, but she turned it down in order to do Xanadu. I know there's an obvious joke in there somewhere, but no, she made the right call doing Xanadu. If you need a reason, just listen to this line. Sydney, darling, the 70s are dead and gone. The 80s are going to be something wonderfully new and different. Which is why this movie bombed. At least I could make sense of that line. I can't really do that with some of the other pieces of dialogue here. We are going to make milk more glamorous than champagne. What does that have to do with anything? I'd rather listen to Gutenberg sing. <laughs> Funny how it's called Can't Stop the Music, when stopping the music would be the one thing that would save this movie. All right, the movie's supposed to be about the formation of the village people. What's the matter? I had to leave my feathers to be oiled, and they gave me this one to wear, and it doesn't even fit right. You think you've got problems? No, no, I don't think he has problems. That was a very stupid thing he just said. And apparently forming the village people was as easy as just approaching random people on the street. Look at this actual character transition. My house, 8 o'clock. <laughs> gotcha. I should have known you could sing, but... I guess when you see somebody every day, you just sort of take them for granted. I mean, counting out exercises is sort of like singing, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is, you know? You, you're a person. Join our fucking musical group. Because Jack wants a hit with his demo reel, he and Samantha form a group together because Jack's singing voice sucks. This calls for some very serious plotting and scheming. According to this movie, just any old person on the street will have better musical chops than Jack. I guess it helps, though, when every street corner contains a musical number. And then 
the building collapsed because you're a terrible construction worker. It gets really awkward when you find out they're building an orphanage. So many starving children are homeless waiting on the streets because the foreman won't stop grinding on things. Whoa, sorry, I was just daydreaming about steel pipes and backup dancers. I would just like to point out that I was not kidding about this movie being two hours. It's a two-hour film made possible by scenes like this. I'd like to explain that scene to you, but an explanation doesn't exist. That scene was about as random as some of the fucking lines. Nice box. That doesn't even make sense. Bruce Jenner didn't even have a vagina yet. It's sad that being robbed at gunpoint by an old lady on a motorized bike is the least embarrassing thing to happen to Bruce Jenner. All right, enough kidding around. Back to the real story. Operator, my, my finger is cut. My finger, operator, my finger is stuck in the dial. Operator! I think that drugs would help me understand this movie a little more, but my real reason for doing the drugs is that I want it to kill me. Oh, but then I wouldn't be able to see the horny neighbor lady wanting to bang the village people. Hello. Oh, you tell him. I'll make up for all the indignities they suffered in Roots. That's right. You heard it here, folks. Having the opportunity to sleep with not Liza Minnelli is our apology for slavery. Let's hope the movie doesn't say anything to screw it up. Well, I guess I'll go crack the whip on the boys, huh? Well, good one, lady. Now white people are assholes again. It's a half hour in. You sure you don't want to beat more people with bread before singing? I'm preparing this major meal and you guys haven't even started rehearsing yet? We were promised dinner. Uh-uh. Yeah, start singing and I'll throw vegetables at you. This is just like that episode of The Brady Bunch, where Marsha and Greg put on a show in the backyard and then one of them fucked an Indian. At least now I know where the village people got their funky beats. Thus the voice of the village people was found, and Steve Gutenberg lost his dignity. At this point, I'd be praying to a picture of Jamie Gillis as well. He could find much better shit than this movie. And I sense a romance blooming. Randy, you try singing lead. David, take your voice lower. Guess I gotta get a new tape. Philippe? All right. Lulu, could you bring us something to drink? <laughs> yeah, sure. Even the cast members are resorting to drugs. Oh, Jackie, Auntie Lulu has a great relaxer. Direct from Mother Nature. <laughs> Lulu. <laughs> you gotta be on something if you ever wanted to see Bruce Jenner act. I'm Ron White, your sister sent you a cake. A little old lady just robbed me. Would you mind running through that again? Bruce is just panicking because he's in a house with talented people for a change, even if the movie sucks. Wait, they still haven't found their lead singer yet? This is Officer Ray Simpson. Officer Simpson, am I glad to I see you. I was leaving an audition this afternoon when I heard this great voice. It was him. Well, that was fucking convenient. And who invited their mother to what will clearly turn into a drug party? Mother, would you do me a favor? Sure. Uh, don't tell everyone here that I'm a genius. I'm your mother. I know, but... These are my friends, and geniuses have a real hard time keeping oh, friends, okay? Wile E. Coyote said the same thing to his mother, and like Wile E. Coyote, this movie is falling flat on its face. This is the kind of movie that makes everyone look stupid. Help! Help me! Apparently that's still a thing that's going on. This is a movie so bad that Kiss can no longer be pissed off about acting in Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park. Oh, are they gonna sing now? I thought this was just gonna be about people calling Bruce Jenner gorgeous for two hours. And you've turned into Snow White. And here are the seven dwarves. Sleepy, sneezy, grumpy, and... Gorgeous. Nice framing. You can almost see three members of the band. Gutenberg looks less like their founder, and more like the drunk guy in the front row of every concert who thinks he's the star. Except in this case, he is the star. Congratulations, movie. You made your first musical bio that's not about the band, but about its heckler. Gutenberg even has to hold up their microphone. This is about as well choreographed as a talent show for blind ferrets. And the acting is about as good, too. I've got to be going. I'll let myself out. Wait a minute! The lasagna was good. It's like they told Bruce to act pissed off even if the line doesn't call for it. Funny how the name of the song is Magic Night, even if it seems more like a curse. We all need to use it, we can have a good time and enjoy all the magic that lies on this great magic night. Who are they looking
looking at? So they got a song together, and Steve Gutenberg must have heard the title album Cruisin' and thought he was acting in the Al Pacino movie, especially with lines like this. I'm not swallowing my pride and going back to him. Sure you can. Uh-uh. Anybody who can swallow two snowballs and a ding-dong shouldn't have any trouble with pride. I don't think you know what that line means, Steve. Samantha is gearing up to pitch their music to her ex-lover slash music producer. What should I give him? Innocent little girl or woman of the world? Neither. You haven't heard? He can swallow two snowballs and a ding-dong. At least they're keeping it classy. Just pick out your dress and go sell your ass off. Look at that chick, bro. Shaking that ass. She knows how to work the heels and the stove. I've also discovered the joys of cooking and cleaning. Damn right. I love me a woman who can shake and bake, bro. You think if we shout loud enough at the TV, she'll get us a brewski? Only one way to find out. Yo! Hey! Girl, hey, hey, bitch! Go get us a brewski! Bitch, we need get a brewski! Get a brewski, bitch! Get a brewski, go bitch! Go, 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 Only this movie could make slow motion look as sexy as someone having a stroke and dying. The producer is Steve Waits, who is so obsessed with his phone, you'd wear out a laugh track with these jokes. Okay, wait, just one minute, one minute! Wanna see what I think of telephones now? What I think of telephones now! Hello? <laughs> look! When you ask Paul? I've never stopped loving you ever, ever, ever. Body of yours is so beautiful. <laughs> Forget about that. Just give them the pitch. Look, I've got them under wraps. They're a revolutionary new concept, and I'm not having my group ripped off. Thought... Good thing they're introducing it at the end of said concept. Oh, hey, there's Bruce Jenner again. I'm sure this won't be stupid. Um, hold it! That sucks. His balls were in that briefcase, and Chris Jenner was in that elevator. I'm sure he has an excuse for being a jerk. I'm a Gemini. I got two personalities. This is the good one. Come on. See? So will you go out with me? Because apparently my personality will change at the drop of a hat. He can at least hail you a taxi cab. Hey! Woo! It takes more than a pretty face to get anywhere in this town. Yes, it's really hard for a white businessman to catch a cab. Forget the village people. This movie is just made by people who hate Bruce Jenner. Oh man, I was hoping they'd include that amazing story from the Village People bio about how Bruce Jenner spilled lasagna on his pants. Okay, first of all, yeah. we need more guys. Why? Well, you see, my music needs a very big sound, you know what I mean? Oh, I got it. We'll put ads in Variety, Backstage, and Billboard. We'll have an addition. Because uh, we so much noise the other night that two neighbors complained and I can't afford to rent a hall. This movie is fucking unwatchable! Magic night! Magic's in the music! It's a magic night! We all need to use it! We can have And it didn't take long for poor Bruce to become someone's housewife again. This movie doesn't just slander the village people, it slanders the 80s! This is the 80s, darling. You're gonna see a lot of things you've never seen before. Yeah, like a Village People movie where wine gets spilled on Bruce Jenner and Valerie Perrine tries mounting him. And that's not even the most disturbing thing that happens in this scene. <laughs> this little piggy went to get market, it, it and this little piggy went home. Wait, I'm taking a sh <laughs> This little piggy... Whoa! Uh, the chick from Guinea Pig would consider watching this movie the second most painful thing that's happened to her. It's too late to get romantic, movie. Which way do we go? To the right. And don't stop till sun up. Luckily for him, the sun comes up in three minutes. This movie is as good as romance as it is with setting up characters. Now listen, you gotta come out of your shell, or you're gonna be leading that group in Washington Square for the rest of your life. The fuck are you? Then, soon enough, Mr. Slave pulls up his motorcycle, and like everyone else in the movie, the script desperately wants you to know that every man in this movie is involved with or interested in a woman. Jenner holds more auditions in his office, where it looks the same as if they were auditioning for a circus, probably because they all smell like elephant shit. I'm not sure I want to know who doesn't make the cut. Body, body, wanna feel my body, body, body. 
Wanna touch my body, body, body. Wanna touch my body, body. You guys don't get to give him weird looks. You're all dressed like an F Troop Adam 12 crossover. I'm sure the movie is as long as it is because they devote a whole lot of time to coming up with the band's name. Ron, dear, didn't Greenwich Village people types go out with the 60s? That's it! The name! Village people! Well, that's not a bad idea. Never mind, that took a whole five seconds. For such a long movie, it's also filled with a lot of misunderstandings that are solved very, very quickly. Uh, aren't you here for the additions? Auditions? I'm here for an extension on my income tax. Oh. <laughs> Glenn, you're in the wrong room. We're having auditions for a singing group. A singing group? Yeah. Well, you ain't heard nothing yet. Ooh, what village people tune is he going to woo us with? Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Yes, but can Danny be a macho man, or in the Navy, or both? I understand that the village people aren't really the main characters here due to their lack of acting experience, but I don't know why the burden has been taken off of them and given to Bruce Jenner, who acts even worse. A lot of times he looks like he accidentally shit his pants and doesn't know whether to be embarrassed or mad. So nice to have met you, Miss Simpson. Thank you. How could you just up and quit your job like that? Uh, why not? Hell, I think they dress him up like this to make the village people look straight by comparison. I think at this point, there's nothing in this movie that they could do to make it more homoerotic. Come on, guys! Yeah! 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 Ah! 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 Okay, who didn't see that one coming? Get ready for the only PG-rated movie with a cock shot. I'm not kidding. This is the most homoerotic, in-the-closet film that I've ever seen. This is like the birdcage if they all went home to their wives when the day was over. It wants to be a movie that's catered to the gay audience, with all the imagery that's in this YMCA sequence, only it's too scared to actually have any of the characters be gay. It wants to have its cake and bake it, too. Let's show Felipe making eyes with this woman, but also throw in a line like this. I'm James and Flames my games. And nope, can't understand what innuendo they're going for here. Hell, the aerobics are all filmed like the cum shot from behind the green door. Sometimes I feel they even need to give the screen a six-pack. But whatever, it's the most popular song of their career, and it's a catchy and fun song, so might as well listen to it. Young man, young man, pick yourself off the ground. And just go to the... Young man, young man. top of each other. Now that they've totally not had sex at the YMCA, it's time to cut that album. <laughs> oh, it's him again. Any more jokes with his phone? So let's show him something he'll never forget. Hi, Dave. What? No, I can't anybody from the beginning of this. Well, with a cell like this, surely Steve Waits will have to pick them up. What we've got for you today is the music that everybody's gonna be dancing to next month. Yeah, like three years ago. And stop dating your movie by bringing up the 80s. This is the sound of the 80s. Everybody's looking for it. Oh, are we auditioning Gary Newman and the Tubeway Army? Nope, just the village people. Liberation. 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 Oh, God bless you, village people. You're liberating me from this terrible movie. Even Gutenberg looks like he's finally had enough of this, and he survived the big green. Waits turns down their offer, but not before something else really fucking stupid happens. Stick it in your ear. Th there was a lot more than that. Why do you always give me this shit? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> the fuck was a nun doing there? 
While Waits turns them down, the boys still get booked for a milk commercial, which seems cute and innocent enough. I don't know what could possibly go wrong here. Do the shake! Mother of all Turkish bathhouses! Do the shake! Do the shake! Do the shake! Do the milkshake! The milkshake! Do the shake! Do the shake! Spill some of your milkshake, bro. It's never happened to me before, bro! My mom always told me to swallow my milkshake! Oh, relax, bro. I'll help you out here. Uh, there you go. Here's one. Uh, yes. One more time. Do the shake! No, no, you've already done a good job of making what is probably the longest commercial ever made, where they are all totally into these backup dancers. This is like the ending to There Will Be Blood, only if Daniel Day-Lewis blew Paul Dano. If they all seem happy about this, it's because they're all actors in a shitty movie and the script is telling them that they have to look happy. Well, almost everyone is happy. Well, how'd you like it? I had no idea you were going to show so much of yourself on television. Oh, I'm sorry, are you against exploitation on television, Bruce Jenner? In fact, why is Jenner in this movie? What does his character do that couldn't be done by Gutenberg's character? Especially the romance subplot, which anyone would assume was where this movie would be going between Jack and Samantha. But no, Jenner, whose character is the dickhead who the lead would normally woo a girl away from, is given the romantic role to the point to where they're engaged by the end of it. Without any kind of character arc for Jack, other than he wants to use the village people to make money, and then he succeeds, it makes his character look shallow and douchey, and Jenner's character seems like a distraction when he has nothing to do with the actual plot. The next step to make the village people a big hit is to put on a really big show. I swear, this is a terrible village people movie, but if you switch them out with puppets, it would probably make for an okay Muppet movie. And since the script had nowhere to go with Bruce being jealous of the commercial, now he's jealous of her meeting with Waits. I can't believe that you called Steve Waits and made it an assignation right in front of me. I wouldn't do something like that behind your back. What were you trying to do? Seduce him into a deal? What the fuck, dollface? I knew we were trying to sell a band, but I didn't know you'd have to actually meet with anyone. And he didn't have a problem with her swimming naked with other men earlier, and before you say it's because they're gay, they're straighter than he is! I can understand him being jealous, though. I mean, Waits has his own private jet with a luxurious Snuggie. And everyone would want to hang out with their mother on this jet. Well, when it comes to eating, all mothers are Jewish. No, wait a minute! Especially when they order Chinese food. Everyone makes it out to San Francisco, that way they can attend a live performance of the Ritchie family, opening for the village people, while singing on a giant phone dial, which I'm guessing gave the village people the inspiration to sing Sex Over the Phone. Boy, is this a lot of pressure. God, Leatherman don't get nervous. Leatherman don't get nervous. Oh, yes, they do. Yeah, according to this movie, Leatherman get nervous because of all the single ladies in the audience. At least some people seem relaxed. Oh, I knew they would love us in Frisco. Oh boy, are you psychic. This is an amazing scene where their contracts come in and everyone is so happy about it. But you know who's missing from the scene? The band. As a senior partner of the law firm that represents village people, there are a number of points that have to be clarified. Witness the thrilling contract negotiation scene. This is the first inspirational movie about a band coming up in the world as seen through the eyes of their managers who are going to make a shitload of money off of them. We know nothing about how this is changing their lives or what they think of their newfound fame because they're not written as characters. They're written as products. What is with Hollywood an oddly misplaced narrative? That's like, hey, we got this amazing story about Sudanese refugees moving to Kansas, so let's make it about a white girl. But the most important thing is, there's nothing really important in this movie. You knew it was going to end with them putting on a concert, so here it is. This movie's getting pretty gay, bro! I'm scared, bro! What are we going to do? You can't stop the music, or you won't stop the music. I'm just waiting for John Candy and his state troopers to rush the stage. <laughs> Wait, that's the better musical that came out on this date. 
and look how excited the audience is. A few of them are raising their hands, while the others in the crowd just stand frozen stiff. Maybe they're confused as to why Endora just walked out on stage, and why Steve Gutenberg and Bruce Jenner are hanging out on the balcony. <laughs> Well, that movie was a bad idea. And I'm sure at some point they thought they had a hit on their hands. The movie was brought to us from writers Alan Carr and Bronte Woodard, who previously scored a hit with Grease. The movie had a $20 million budget, which you can't see on the screen for reasons I'll get into. That's near half the budget of Heaven's Gate. And the movie is filmed like the kind of TV movie that they air only once out of obligation and then forget about it. Granted, the film was directed by Nancy Walker, whose directing experience had only been in television, and she was also a popular TV actress, most notably as Ida Morgenstern on both Rhoda and the Mary Tyler Moore Show, and movies such as Murder by Death. The studio touted that Walker was the first woman to direct a multi-million dollar theatrical musical and signed her to a three-picture deal, which never happened because the movie tanked. So you got that? We're so progressive that we got a lady to direct our film, unless the movie flops, and then she will never direct a feature again. Half of the film's budget wasn't even spent on the movie. It went towards promotional parties, lavish premieres, and items such as the TV special Magic Night featuring Cher on roller skates, and, I'm not kidding, a tie-in flavor at Baskin Robbins called Can't Stop the Nuts. Get it? As colorful and upbeat as the music and the band is, this movie is like looking at a rainbow through a window that someone smeared a coat of bacon grease on and tried wiping it off with a single square of toilet paper. Long story short, it's really, really, really fucking bad. And I'm glad that we've come to the end of Musical March in September, because now I can get back to much better things, like movies shot on VHS tapes. Do you wear a dickie? <laughs> I think you can let go of me now, bro! No, not just yet. Huh? Huh? Oh no, bro!